today is going to be our last day at the Hill um, doing Rising here, which we feel a lot of praise about. Um, nervous, sad, uh, excited for the next chapter, grateful, all of those things. Crystal and Zyger going independent is, I think, going to go down as a major inflection point in political media. My name is James Lee. Welcome to my channel 5149, where I talk business, politics, society, and today, I want to talk about why it matters that Crystal and Sagar left Rising in the Hill to start their own independent show called Breaking Points. And I have to say, Crystal and Sagar are two unexpected trailblazers. I mean, on one side, we have Crystal Ball, an ex-cable news MSNBC alum, and on the other, Sagar and Jetty, an ex-Tucker Carlson employee, and the two came together to co-host an anti-establishment morning show called Rising that, in their words, challenged conventional wisdom and shifted both parties to work in the interest of the working class instead of their current financial masters with the ultimate goal of hating each other as American people less and hating the elites more. And it really was an awesome show that many have aptly described as a mainstream show that didn't sound mainstream. But for me, even as a fan, it always felt a little weird. Like on one hand, The Hill really gave the show an aura of credibility with some folks. But on the other hand, every time I watch, I'm like, it's The Hill. Which leads me to my first point as to why it was so important that Crystal and Saga made the decision to go independent, which is that it eliminates potential conflicts of interest. Going independent creates a proper incentive structure to report the news fairly and provide genuine commentary that is free from corporate influence. Crystal addressed this exact point last week on her Crystal Kyle and Friends podcast. While she was at MSNBC, she was strongly discouraged from providing critical coverage of Hillary Clinton. So anyway, I get a message from the president of the network that's like, we're not trying to curtail your coverage. You can say mm -hmm. whatever you want about Hillary Clinton, but you have to approve it with us. Oh, with that, that is trying to not... curtail your coverage. And Sagar shared a story about his boss getting a call from a big donor of the Hill after said donor was very displeased with a story he covered on Rising. I did a whole expose on the Washington slime who are all going and working as lobbyists for TikTok. And those people are very well paid and very well connected. Mm. And they, you think they called me? Nope. Went all the way up to the bottom. How dare he? This, wow. this, and this. The fact is we're all human beings and we're subject to being influenced by external pressures. Like no matter how much integrity you think you might have, if you work at a cable news network that depends heavily on advertisements from major industries such as oil and gas, what do you think happens to your coverage of companies like Chevron? Probably not a surprise to many that Stephen Donzinger's story has been almost entirely ignored by mainstream media. If you work at the Washington Post, how do you cover Amazon fairly given the fact that they're both owned by Jeff Bezos? Or if you work at ABC News, a subsidiary of the Walt Disney Company, are you able to report on Disneyland's inhumane labor practices? I can give you a never ending list of these types of potential conflicts of interest, but the point is going independent removes this potentially corrupting element and allows Crystal and Saga to focus on their audience, which leads me to my second point, which is despite going independent, they still have an amazing show for everybody. Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Welcome to Breaking Points with Crystal and Sagar. We have an amazing show for everybody today. I miss saying that, Crystal. What I know. Happening? Indeed yeah. we do. That line is forever Sagar's. But in all seriousness, once they've worked through some of the initial kinks that are inevitable when launching a new show, I think the show has so much more potential than Rising because even more so than before, they get to explore whatever topics they want could be more segments informing the public about the housing crisis or an expose on how every rich, famous, or powerful person is somehow all connected to the world's most infamous pedophile or getting us one step closer to finding out the truth about UFOs. They don't really have to worry about clicks or views or adhering to cable news style blocks or segments or cutting off Irami when they know, and we know, he has so much more to say. Right. Like, so, so it's that, a, I mean, it's a very important point. And for, I know we literally have to do this every time. I'm very sorry. Yeah. You will come back. You will make your points. You always make a thing. Imagine how amazing a 20 minute back and forth between Irami, Crystal and Sagar would be. Make it happen, guys. But perhaps the most important thing that could come out of Crystal and Sagar going independent is that it redefines success in media. For decades or pretty much as long as we can remember, the pinnacle of success for someone who wanted to be a broadcast journalist was a gig on TV. Maybe CNN or Fox News, or if you're dreaming real big, a primetime network news gig. But Crystal and Sagar said, no, we're gonna go in a different direction. We want our own show, one that is funded by the audience. I don't know how to not overstate this, but independent media just scored a huge win. 
And to be fair, I think the independent media ecosystem is already incredibly strong. But for those not on board, the more traditional folks, I think Crystal and Sagar have the resume, the talent, and the integrity to change how people perceive independent media. It's not the minor leagues anymore. Here are two people who obviously could have been on cable television if they wanted to, because they've literally been on it. And in terms of people on cable, I, I always hold the belief that most are smart and probably know right from wrong, but as they try to climb the corporate ladder to get on air or to get promoted to that prime time time slot, values are inevitably compromised. So if Crystal and Sagar are successful, which I think they will be, their move could potentially not only validate the viability of independent media, but more importantly, alter the pipeline of talent in broadcast media and journalism in general. Like for a young, talented kid who wants to be a journalist or a political commentator, the dream, the pinnacle, wouldn't necessarily be establishment media anymore. There's now a new roadmap that says, hey, the goal isn't necessarily to be a primetime anchor on CNN or to write for the Washington Post. The goal is to have your own show, have your own substack funded by your own audience where you get to talk about whatever it is that you think is important. And with breaking points already surpassing 200,000 subscribers at the time of recording this, which is the day of the first episode, the new formula for media success isn't to manufacture hate or outrage, but rather to foster an audience full of free thinkers who are open to good faith discussions free from partisan cheerleading. And those are my thoughts about why I think it's so important that Crystal and Sagar took the chance to go independent. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think about Crystal and Sagar and their new show, Breaking Points, in the comments section below. Uh, if you enjoy my work, please hit the like button and share my videos with your friends and family. Share them with Crystal and Sagar. And if you feel compelled, which I think you should, uh, subscribe to my channel so you can get notified the next time I post a video. As always, thank you so much for your time, and I will see you next week. Thank you.